Welcome back to Factorio Demystified. We'll be looking at electronic circuits in this episode, some different ways of building them, and why I'm choosing a particular approach. But first up, a couple items in the broader picture. I have doubled up my science production from two to four assemblers of each of the red and green, and that's just to make sure we're through all the red and green science by the time I'm ready to move on to the next tier. I've also done a bit of a changing to how much we're storing up, including going up to a full thousand on the transport belts because of all the belts we're going to be laying out for building the bus and adding more production to our smelting and all of that. Then, if we look at our copper mining area, well, this one is used up and less than a thousand left there, and we've got a few hundred left here. And we only have the one other patch that is going to last for quite a while, but it's going to only have nine mining drills there. So as this starts to decline, got one more research coming in. I have set up this area over here so that we're going to be totally set. This will be way more than we need, but I want to make sure that we are ready for the future. So 4 million plus in this ore patch, and we have 28 on this side feeding one belt and 21 mining drills over here feeding another. With the first level of mining productivity in, we can saturate a yellow belt with just over 27 mining drills. We have almost enough to saturate two belts here. And if we run that down here, I've also got iron and copper set up here for supplying our electronic circuits. And the reason that I have more copper is it takes 50% more copper than iron. So I'm going to want to gradually scale this up in a way where I have that ratio continuing. And these two belts go all the way over here, of course, to the interchange and flow in. So we now have plenty of supply for whatever we're going to want to do. So if we begin to set this up, there's a basic structure that you're going to want to use. Say we're over here off the copper. And this is pretty much unanimously deployed. We're going to have three that are going to use the copper cable. And then two of the electronic circuits. And the reason for that ratio is the electronic circuit recipe, you can see it requires three copper cable. Each of these produces two in the same time it takes that 0.5 second by default to produce one electronic circuit. So that's where we get the three to two ratio from more research as some of these are coming in pretty quickly now. And then in between here, we will simply set up inserters. And so the way this works is these inserters will feed one to one here and one to one here. And then this machine will put half of its output into each of these. And we've got a perfectly functioning ratio. We will be looking at four different ways of doing electronic circuits. Although the power poles aren't exactly the same, this setup comes to us from Catherine of Sky. And some players like to do this bit where you have the electronic circuits machines separated from each other by a space. It looks a little bit more symmetrical and spacious. I really like the color aesthetic of this kind of approach with the blue fast inserters and the red long-handed inserters. But you've got the copper coming in from each side and then you have the iron coming in this way, and then the long-handed inserters are feeding this output belt of green circuits in the middle. And Catherine of Sky uses the same general approach that I do in terms of feeding in here, which is important. That is, having a dedicated smelter area that goes into the electronic circuits as opposed to coming off of the main bus. So there are some similarities there. Not everyone takes that approach though. This is a build from Degray, who will take the iron and copper off the bus. And one of the things that allows is they could eventually extend this up bigger and really fill up these two now output belts of green circuits because you could simply flood more copper than you could fit on one belt through here on the outside lanes. And you've got the iron coming in here. You've got the undergrounds there. And then they're unloading here, so they're not using the long-handed inserters the fast inserters here and just merging them in the middle. This build comes to us courtesy of Nilaus and is sort of the ultimate or logical conclusion of this type of idea used in conjunction with a city block style build and we're bringing in as many materials as are necessary in to supply 
two full belts up to blue belts coming out. We would just simply make this taller if we wanted to have that happen. But you can see they've got the extra belt here. These would actually be half belts of copper properly. And then we've got the inserters just shifting over more material constantly. So this lane would stay full and you can keep adding more machines and just feeding in the copper cables as much as is necessary. And then the iron in here, well, it's jumping over these inserters so it's getting a little bit closer to save space, closer to these machines. And then you've got the splitters here. This is a nice little trick to load all of your iron into them this way. So instead of the side offloading that Degray's build does, we've got the side inloading of the iron. And then we're taking off the electronic circuits and they're going into these splitters, which I think are probably not entirely necessary, but they're definitely gonna make sure we're getting everything distributed evenly at every point that we're going to be outputting. So this is again, a really great expression of that whole idea of whatever material we need in, and then we're gonna have a compact, efficient setup, get the most output that we can here. Here's the setup I'll be using, and of course this is not original to me, at least Exterminator, and I'm sure many others have been using and recommending this for years. And it's functionally identical actually to the first one we looked at, except we have this only one belt of iron coming in instead of the one on each side. And that leads us to having these alternating bits of inserters instead of symmetrical ones in the middle, much like we did when we saw the steel smelting setup earlier, if you recall. Now the reason I'm not having a second output belt of the electronic circuits is we simply can't support it. The input constraint is off of our smelting column, so that means at most we're going to have a blue belt of copper cable, and then that'll be split into the two sides. We will need only one red belt of iron to support that and we'll only be able to produce an output of one red belt of the electronic circuits. Now if you're using a different factory setup where you're pulling these items off of the bus or using the city block or whatever formation you want to do to make that happen and you can just expand how much you're pulling in, then you can scale this up of course. But to me it's not worth it in this scenario. We can very easily troubleshoot problems when we're taking them directly off an individual smelting column. And we're probably going to, just as a matter of scale, have two of these setups, or maybe three at most. Might end up going with three. And that's going to be enough to get us through. So we will simply expand to another smelting area further down to the west when we need to build this larger. Now we've got the nine copper cable on each side and the six of the electronic circuits. And that will eventually scale up to get us that one full red output and it can all move on to the bus. The resources we need produced to get the bus going are now all being made. So we need a basic structure or layout to get it in place. And where I'm standing here is essentially gonna be the cornerstone of it. I'm just gonna to go to the east of this ridge line where the cliff is and to the north of this line where it cuts off. So I'm building all into empty cleared space. So we'll just start off right about here and I'm gonna go with six sections to begin and later on we can advance over further to the west either above where the cliffs are or clear them out. So the first couple are just gonna be miscellaneous no more than one belt of any particular item. And then we're gonna have a couple belts in this next section for the more advanced circuit types, the red advanced circuits and the blue processing units. I'm gonna have two belts for the iron gear wheels and I'm leaving more belt room for all of these items, then we're going to need again. Leave yourself space to expand. And then I'm going to do a full section for the green electronic circuits, a full section of copper, and a full section of iron. And if you don't know how much to make when you're starting out, then we could have everything all together on this side of the bus and then gradually spread it out. It just requires a lot more belt gymnastics than we really want to do. but. It is still very possible. You do not have to know this ahead of time. Then I want the gap for the shoulder. 10 tiles or more is probably enough. 12 might be optimal. I'm gonna go with 15, again, just to make sure that I'm leaving plenty of space. And then I'll put down a marker here. And then everywhere up from the east and north of this is where we can actually build our production lines. 2,000 transport belts and chains later, we now have everything hooked up and connected. We can see the steel line is coming up here from our jumpstart factory to join everything. And down here, 
we've just got this gap above these two lines of the circuits and the gear wheels and then everything is just sort of moving over in an orderly fashion so where the steel joins is probably what you'd call the beginning of the bus proper in the miscellaneous we've got the coal we've got stone stone bricks all of those barely needed enough to go on the bus but they are and then our steel gear wheels electronic circuits copper and iron and then further over here we've also got iron ore and water and those will just be needed briefly for a couple of items nearby but I'm not putting them on the bus because they won't go any further than that they'll just simply stop there so going forward next time we're going to be building what's usually termed the mall I have a different name for it but that's going to be replacing what we do in the jumpstart factory all the key items that we need to expand the factory only this one is going to be much larger more dynamic and it's going to really cover what we're going to need for the rest of the life of the factory. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Hope you'll return for that.